you know, the Ditka show yeah. or Walter Payton's first show after the the diagnosis. Like oh, when, when, when you think of, oh my God, I was there and I associate that moment in time with the score. Where does your mind go? Yeah, no, there's no question. You know, the, the Walter Payton show that we did at the time from Carlucci's and Rosemont uh, with Jiggets and North and, and, Walter had let us all know that he wanted to unveil what was going on with him in a press conference, but he wanted to do it with Jiggets and North. So so he did reveal it on that show. Well, he did it right after the show. So we used to do that show at noon, but we invited the media in. I, I tell you to this day, I still feel uncomfortable when I when I see some of the photos and some of the video of frankly the score logo and everything splashed all over the place. While Walter Payton is revealing to the world that he had this terrible disease, uh, it's it's weird to feel that. And I was there at the time and 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 watching it all. But you know, it got a lot of exposure. But honestly, Mike Ditka really helped put the station on the map. His last year as a Bears coach, he just unraveled and lost it, as you know, on the air. And at one point, he just said, "I'm not doing any more press conferences." So, like the Monday after the games, he didn't do them anymore. But he was on the score Monday after the games. We were paying him to be a guy who was there in the afternoon with our people. And as a result, all the TV cameras would come out to the remote that we were doing. And everything Mike Ditka would say on a Monday after a game in his last season, it would have been from the score. How about that? Think I about mean, it's that. It's just not fathomable. Like, you know, they, they have their own social media channel and their own website. Different and world. And it's league mandated. It, it, the, the idea of, I mean, obviously, sometimes we do something that is, quote, unquote, newsworthy and the clip will get played on the newscast. But, but appointment the, radio of the Bears coach on a Monday, you can only hear him here. For Correct. the first time hearing him here. That's just, that is a crazy concept. And I mean, I can't think there's no better exposure. Oh, right. it was nothing it that was the tremendous. Bulls did, nothing that the Cubs did. That, that, that would have to be the single best piece of exposure you Let's could get. Let's be honest. The world has not changed from this regard. The Bears are the number one team in Chicago. Yep. They have the biggest fan base. There's no split. Bulls are great when they play well, you know. The Rosen's fantastic. The Jordan years outstanding. Yeah. But never what the Bears did, 85, when you have success. Even, you know, they went to the Super Bowl and lost to Peyton Manning in 2006, you know, is still the biggest thing. The Cubs winning the World Series, unbelievable. 108 years, unbelievable. But there's still a split allegiance. There's a lot of Sox fans and a lot of Bear, uh, Cubs fans, too. The Bulls don't have the same following. The, the Blackhawks don't have the same following. It's not the same. 30, 30 years, uh, Goose, there's some white whales. Reinsdorf was on the station a couple of times. Yeah. Early, sure, right? Sure, yeah. With North. Jordan ever on the station? Uh, yes, Michael Jordan was on in in early stage. Absolutely, with, with, with North and Jiggins. You know, I don't. I believe so. We used to. Here's the thing about the producers. So the the biggest dilemma and why you had to have an executive producer because the shows as a daytimer you had morning, midday, afternoon, and they would all fight for the same guests. I I, I can't imagine. I can't even imagine what yeah. that's like. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So somebody had to try to cultivate and decide who's going to get a shot at once. I don't remember who is on with whom. Okay. I don't. I won't lie to you. I tried to stay out of that. There were enough fights that I was involved with, not to have to worry about who there who got the guest. Best fight between talent. Well, you know, we had transition every day, kind of like that goes on now. So there would only be... with one show though, right? North and Jiggets and McNeil and Boers. I don't think anybody else transitioned. Well, from morning into midday. Oh, you from did? Midday into, oh, absolutely. We did that. We did okay. that. Okay. Was uh, there ever one where you're like, oh, damn, it spilled into your office? Actually, to blows. the biggest fights weren't among the hosts as much as they were with me. In all honesty, there would be times I would, my little office on Belmont, oh, which, by the way, was about one sixteenth the size of this studio we're sitting in right now. Uh, tr imagine a large Dan Jiggets. And Mike North trying to sit in there. They couldn't sit in there together with the door closed. So we would have the door open. Uh, but, you know, there were times North would start screaming about something. That was Mike's way. And the way to get through to Mike was to scream back at him. So nowadays, I don't have to scream at anybody at WBBM. I can tell you it's a very professional atmosphere. But at the score, there was a lot of screaming and yelling that went on back and forth. But the great thing was at the end of the conversation, 
the screaming conversation, we could shake hands, be friends. We understood what was going on, and we were on the same page. Two things are your um, your legacy in my mind um, for a lot of people here. Like your audience changes every twenty minutes or every fifteen minutes was a mantra from you. You're absolutely correct. You're absolutely mm -hmm. correct was something you said. And then recording. You ever hear Mac do this, or sometimes I'll do it. A recording in three, two, and one. No, actually, I was the voice of the station yes. for nine years. So we used to have like, uh, you know, you would hear from a movie soundtrack, goodbye, Mr. Spaulding. And then I'd go, you've got the score. <laughs> Sports Radio 820. And that stuff would play all day long. There you go. Now people know that was you. Should Mike North have taken half? I should have gotten paid more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure there's way more, but uh, we were thinking about it before the show. Uh, North and Jigs. Yep. Doug and OB. Yep. Dan and Terry. Yep. You put all three of those pairings together. No, well, yes and no. Yes and no. I, you know, some of those guys before the station started and went on the air were already hired. But I was working behind the scenes at another station, which, by the way, was on the 670 frequency at the time. <laughs> and I was a sports anchor in the afternoon, but I was also preparing to leave to join the score. We must ask questions about what station that was. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. It was a, that was a great station compared to, you know, compared to now. But in any <laughs> event, you know, it, it, it was a time when some of those guys like Jiggs was already hired. Dan McNeil was already hired. Tom Scher was already hired. But nobody knew what the best combinations were. What do you do with Terry Boris? What do you do with Brian Hanley? Who do you put with Dan Jiggets? How do you make it all mesh and go together? How so, do you? Well, we got lucky. I will tell you this. It was it was almost through default that we figured a few things out. Mike North was that last guy who we offered a part-time job on the weekends, and he came into my office and already, you know, we were going to pay him like, I don't know, $35,000 or something to work. And, and, and he came in and goes, what do you mean a part-time job? I, you need me to work full-time weekday. This is a guy. I mean, he was always the same. Always the same. He had never really done radio. I mean, he he no. bought he bought time at the yep. little station across the street. Right, he, was, he owned a hot dog stand. But he's still arguing. I need to be on full time. He already <laughs> like knew him. everything. <laughs> he already knew everything he wanted to to have happen. And what happened was, we couldn't find the right guy to work with Jiggets. We I listened to tape after tape after tape. Mike North's tape I put on in my house. I'm listening, to, you know, probably late summertime. And my fiance at the time, my now wife, she uh, she started laughing when she was listening to him. So I, I was like, you like him? You think he's good? She goes, yeah, he's funny. So he wound up being the guy by default. We and should bring her in. Three days later. <laughs> yeah, she so, actually would be a better radio yeah. show. So, so she put them together. That's correct. So three <laughs> days in, though, of being on the air. So went on the air that January 2nd. Of 1992, three days later, the management team, if you will, Seth Mason, the president at the time, Harvey Wells, general manager, actually four of us, me and also Dan Lee, who owned the station, three days in, we said, wow, this is magic. We actually got lucky and wow. found something we knew was right, and it was very right. Who were some of the other people that you considered? Oh, boy, you want to embarrass people now? That's fun. It's no, 30, it, I mean, it's 30 years ago. I don't ago. think it would embarrass them. You're, you're thinking Whether about... Whether they were here or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, any at least names that our audience would know, like people who either could have been in on the ground floor or were considered. I mean, I think it's fascinating. It's just the luck and the odds of the business. You know? There you go. Okay, well, but I also understand that 30 years ago, I also got married. So we weren't sure when the station started or when the marriage started that either one would last 30 years. <laughs> sure. So we've been kind of lucky that way. No, okay, so one of them uh, would have been a guy named Bruce. You may remember Bruce Wolf, who was a funny guy. And the idea of the station, we wanted to have fun. Not like you guys, always serious all the time. Oh, right. We wanted to have fun. So Bruce Wolf was kind of a comedy genius, came up with all kinds of ideas and things. But he decided kind of to back out because he didn't feel he knew the the X's and O's well enough of the game, like you guys do, to be able to really delve deeply into what's going on. Mm. So he was out of it. Yeah, it's daunting uh, to do 20 hours a week. On that it's stuff. terrible. I'm so I'm so uh, scared for you guys. I don't know how you do it. But 
There was a guy who used to work at another station down the dial, used to be 72, has a zero on it now or something, who did afternoons years ago, a guy named Don Vogel. He was a blind talk show host who at the time was working in Milwaukee. And he sent a tape, and I listened to that, and I was like, you know, there's something. Have him send me another tape. And he probably sent us like four different tapes because we kind of thought that might be the guy. And as we listened over and over, I was like, it's just not quite right. I, I just don't think that's going to work for what we're looking to do. And that's really what gave Mike North the inroads to be the guy. Doug and OB. Doug and OB. So that was an interesting combination. We were trying to figure out what to do. The first year that we were on the air against the Bears, we actually used to rotate the weekday guys and they would work weekends. So Mike North, and we'd repair them. So on the weekends, sometimes Mike North would be with Dan McNeil and Dan Jiggets would be with someone else. So the first year, we were doing some different things. Uh, and Doug Buffone was a part timer. So he sometimes would be on and do Bears pre or post, but it might be with Dan McNeil or Mike North or something like that. And then we had some conversations, and we, uh, Ed Obradovich used to be on as a guest periodically. And somebody came to me and said, well, you know, what would you think about this pairing? And I'm like, you know, it's worth a shot. Let's see what they sound like together. And it was magic. I, I mean, they were unreal. And talk about something completely different. Doug wasn't a host. He, like, he had to teach him how to be a host. Well, right? well, there was a time we had a third person with them because they couldn't, like, do the, – they couldn't start it, right? They they couldn't be a Danny Parkins to tell people, hey, you're listening to WB, you know, you're listening to the score or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's a good impression. That was, that was very good. That was really good. I can't do it either. So that's, few people could do it. I mean, that's, that's, that's very exactly good. right. Yeah. Very impressive, by the way. So, But that's the thing. They Thank couldn't you. handle that. So so we did that. By the way, for a while, you may remember the Bear and the Bull. Yeah, of course. Which, which by the way, was a great weekend show. That was that was Doug Buffone and Norm Van Leer. Norm was amazing. A, a, the, Norm was really good and really sweet and really fun and was super kind um, in my recollection. He was I had a, wonderful dealing with him. He was that. a great guy, but he always liked to sing. Yes, he I did. had to stop him from singing because Zeppelin. nobody wanted to hear him sing on the air. <laughs> Hmm. But the two of them sung very well. Uh oh. Uh oh. You touched the nerve. That's interesting. <laughs> what about Dan and Terry? Dan and Terry were just, you know, they were great together. But you know, here's the thing they agreed a whole bunch of the time. And we sometimes wanted a little bit more clashing. You don't want everybody to say, oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, you're right. You want to have differing opinions. Mm -hmm. And we always told people that you should be effusive in your praise just as much as you're going to be highly critical when you're against something or you don't like something. And sometimes that was difficult and they would have a hard time getting to that level. But Terry was, Terry was really special because there would be moments of disaster in the world and Terry could put that into perspective for everyone in a way that no other sports guy really was able to do. Hmm. So he was, he was spectacular that way. But the two of them together, they, they were just fun.